Do you want to add Amazon Cognito to your serverless project? In this video, that is exactly what we're going to learn how to do. Hi guys, my name is Sam with Complete Coding, where our aim is to make you into the best developer that you can be. In this video, we're going to be learning how we can set up Amazon Cognito as part of our serverless project. Amazon Cognito is a user management system which allows users to log in, sign up, and then once those users are signed up, we can do things like authenticate our API endpoints using those details. This works really nice with AWS Amplify to allow you to more easily integrate these kind of services into your front end applications. So now we're going to jump into the code and see how we can set up our Cognito instance in our serverless project. So in the code, we now need to create our user pool and the client that will have access to that user pool. To do that, we're going to start by scrolling down to the bottom of our serverless YAML file where we'll find our resources. Previously, we've defined a demo bucket and a DynamoDB table. So we're going to scroll down to the bottom of there and we're going to add a new resource which is in line with these here. So this new resource is going to be first our Cognito user pool. And this has a type of AWS colon colon Cognito colon colon user pool. And this user pool needs to have a few defined properties. These properties include a user pool name, so user pool name. And I'm going to use the provider stage for defining this like this. So self colon provider dot stage. And using this just means that we are going to have this change if we change from dev to UAT or to production, we're going to get a new user pool. So the name is going to be dev dash user dash pool, simply like that. As well as that, we need to define how we want the customer to define their username. And we do that with username attributes. And this is going to be, in our case, email, which means that the user can sign up with their email and then log in with their email as well. Finally, we need to define an auto verified attributes list and for this one it's also going to be email. So now that we've defined our user pool we need to be able to access this from a web application or from an app so we need to create a client that can access this pool. To do that we need to create a Cognito user pool client. And again, this is going to have a type of AWS colon colon Cognito colon colon user pool client like that. As well as that, this now also needs properties and these properties are a client name again using the provider 
So self colon provider dot stage dash user dash pool dash client. And now we need to say which user pool this client is connected to. So in our case, it's going to be the one we've defined up here. So the user pool ID. And instead of having to work out what this is, we can just simply use ref to reference this and copy the name of the resource and paste it just like that. This means that this client can access this pool of users. Finally, we need two more fields. One is an explicit auth flows. And for us, we're going to go with one explicit auth flow. And that is going to be admin no SRP auth. And finally, the last thing we want to do is make sure that we don't automatically generate secrets. So generate secrets is going to be set to false. If we save this, we've now got everything we need to create both the user pool and a client so that we'll be able to access this, which will allow us to log in and log out our users. So now in here, we're going to do SLS deploy, which is going to build this, and then we can check it out in our AWS account. Now that that has finished deploying, we can head over to our AWS account, and we can have a look at the user pools that we've created. On the home page, we can search for Cognito. And when we go into Cognito, if we click on Manage User Pools, we'll see that we have a dev user pool. That's because we were deploying from a dev stage. So that is the pool that we've created. Inside here, we've got all of the details for the pool as if we'd created it manually. But if you look down in app clients, we can see that we have a dev user pool client and this is the app ID. So if we wanted to use this in, for example, an Amplify app, we'd need this ID. And that is exactly what we're gonna be doing in the next video. In this video, we've learned about the relatively easy process of setting up a Cognita user pool and a new client for that user pool inside our serverless application. Once we set it up and deployed it, we could see that we had a user pool as well as a client with a client ID. We're gonna be using that client ID in the next couple of videos to create a front-end application with sign up, login, and authentication all using a Amazon Cognito. If you've learned something new in this video and want to learn more, if you want to have a go at becoming a full stack developer, learning about databases and storage and more APIs and how you put it all together to create a full product, then I've actually got a course linked in the description that will cover this whole process from start to end. This course will be brilliant if you want to take your career to the next level and become a full stack developer. If you just want to carry on learning on this YouTube channel, then please give this video a like as it helps share this video to more developers just like yourselves. And if you haven't done already, subscribe down here and turn on the bell notification so you get notified next time I release a YouTube video. Thank you and I'll see you in that next video.